As we all know, each week we welcome to our NFG stage one of our highly talented members or special guests with something designed to help you and your business. This week's guest brings nearly three decades of global logistic experience into our grasp. Starting as an export supervisor, she learned the ropes before looking at how the industry could be monetized through a variety of sales roles. At the turn of the last decade, she showed she followed two radically different routes, turning passion into purpose with both logistics and nature photography, seeking academic skills to support each of them. With the onset of COVID, she decided to launch her own business, offering her expert talents in making the import and export process with marketing research to support it as streamlined, smooth, and cost-effective for clients as possible. She's passionate about promoting brand Britain, which is priceless. And in her own words, everyone knows the Union Jack or Union flag. And across the globe, this flag is synonymous with quality, dependability, and trust. And she passionately believes that now is the right time for businesses such as ours to leverage it for our own growth, more so now with Brexit. Here with a talk that will keep us very much glued to our screens, we bring to you Sakai Manashi Fraser. Good morning. Perfect. Thank you. Why go international? Trade promotes network effects, a phenomenon whereby increased number of people or participants improve the value of goods and services. Trade, be it bilateral or multilateral, has brought prosperity and improved lives for all post World War II. Brexit held an uncertainty into markets with no clear guidelines. FDI is viewed as a positive economic indicator, and FDI is continuing to drop. Since 2016, it started off at 192 billion and it went down by 58% in 2007 after the Brexit referendum. It went to 80.6 billion and then further dropped again in 2018. Post Brexit has presented a wicked problem for organized com complexity. Solutions aimed at the problem as important opportunity costs and side effects dependent on events beyond scope of any one problem. Businesses find themselves in a dynamic and largely uncertain environment, creating need to accept risk. It calls for contingency planning and flexibility to respond to unimaginable contingencies of having to look for alternative markets. The problem can be seen quite differently depending on the viewer's perspective, your past experiences, your loyalties, or can be an opportunity. The next slide, please. Brexit after effects, business competitors are international while consumers are global. Global trade is important. However, there's a disconnect between businesses and consumers. We do not have a Brexit, we do not have a trade uh, crisis. A trade crisis can be fixed, but we have a confidence crisis in global trade and people feel disadvantaged. Unfortunately, political reality and business reality are poles apart. Political cycle and economic cycle are quite different. Political cycle on average is about three to five years. In the face of economic disruptions, politics, in order to engage and communicate with the electorate, they have a knee jerk reaction to default setting of protectionism and, nar and nationalistic narrative. Yet the problem in most cases is domestic, but because it's a VUCA, the elephant in the room is not addressed accordingly. Focus should be on promoting education and reskilling. It's a duty of both institutions and governments in collaboration with business to educate people on the benefits of trade and more so on international trade. Brexit actually dampened markets with no complete bounce back expected anytime soon. Only last week, a report on a shortage of labor is a result of Europeans having left due to Brexit, affecting supply chains with threats to shortages if not addressed immediately. Let us, next slide, please. Should we do internationalization or the local or localization? Home markets might be struggling due to economic pressures of both Brexit and COVID challenges. By going global, you have immediate access to practically unlimited range of customers in areas where there's no more money where there's more money available to spend. Different cultures have different wants and needs, opening up opportunities to diversify your product range and to take advantage of these differences. Unless your pricing is wrong. The higher the volume of your products you sell, the more profit you make. Going global is profitable with opportunity to use up at any excess capacity in your business. By exporting also allows you to gain exposure to new ideas, management practices, marketing techniques, and ways of competing, which can help you better 
position your business, both within the UK and our overseas markets to increase competitiveness. If we go to the next slide. What is your vision for going for and for going to the future? Contingency theory shows that firms that export performance is actually directly related to the context, i.e. the internal or external environment of which firms operate in this management. SMEs engaging in export practices have increased considerably with technological improvements. Successful export performance shows the extent of a firm's goals, both financial and non-financial. If we go to the next one. Resource-based value uh, value focuses on establishing competitive edge through amassing of resources such as assets, proficiencies, organizational procedures, knowledge, co-product attributes, and data. The resource-based approach relies on key determinants, mainly management determinants and organizational determinants. Management dependencies include technical and technological skills, motivation to export your networks, your perceived benefits from exporting, expected out export outcomes, your cultural uh, thing, uh, preferences, self-efficacy and risk-taking propensity. Organizational dependencies are organizational characteristics such as the size of your business, your resources available to you, your competencies, proficiencies, processes and objectives. Global experience of management team has a significant effect on export performance and then also in your capacity, than your capacity for innovation. If we go to the next one. Exporting internationally is a risky business. There's a high level of commitment needed to maintain and sustain presence in export markets. It takes time to build relationships of trust, but worth it if you actually manage to do it. There's also a risk of complexities that come from exporting, such as regulatory challenges, documentation, cultural barriers, to mention a few. You reduce your vulnerability when you export as you do not have to solely depend on the local sales within the UK. However, you must weigh the risk of extra costs for developing any export market and the possibility of product modification in order to meet the safety, security, and other re requirements in export market. Market information can actually be extremely difficult to find, and you normally have to verify it to just make sure it's accurate. You have to consider also the trade terms of engagement to ensure no ambiguity or risk of non-payments. If we go to the next one. Globalization is more than physical goods and commodities. With a new dif different kind of globalization that is dawning in services, ideas, data, information, and research and development. Service trade represents about 20 to 25% of total global trade, but its significance is actually rising substantially and it's been internationalized. Knowledge diffusion has grown by a factor of 1.4 since uh, the, uh, the global financial crisis of 2007 and 2008. Global trade flows have grown exponentially with the trade in information services also reaching the developing world, opening up new market opportunities. Localization due to protectionism in goods trade may be growing, but reality is that the force of economic globalization is to remain very strong as technology is enabling inclusive business models that support the shift. You should invest in internationally only if you have the acumen and capabilities to compete and thrive in more geographically cha changed world or you engage experts or consultants to guide you through the process. If we go to the next one, please. Brand Britain has value, invoking perception of quality and adherence to high standards. Provenance has become a driver in luxury imports across the world as consumers become more environmentally aware and substantially becomes, and sustainability becomes a lifestyle choice. By exporting, it forces companies to protect consumers and preserve our natural resources through measures in labeling requirements, standards on technical specification, quality standards and of exporting country. If we go to the next one. You do need a helping hand when you're going into international markets. Do not assume that the forces that have led your business to grow in the past will propel similar growth in the future. Seek expert advice and reskill your staff to take advantage of opportunity Brexit actually presents. If we go to the next one. Multinationals have placed global trade at the center of their value creation strategies. From 2000 to 2018, 6.7 trillion of the 9.2 trillion in growth of assets of multinational companies has come from foreign affiliates. 
SMEs have a great potential. You are more agile, more nimble than multinational corporations. Why not take advantage of the opportunities presented by Brexit? You do not necessarily need to produce your own goods. You can get involved in the lucrative business of cross trades, which is known also as a triangular trade or third party shipments or foreign to foreign shipments, which is a transaction involving three parties in three different countries. This is where the seller of the goods is not the manufacturer or exporter. It's mainly when the seller is not in the same country where the goods originate from. I've got one case study if we go to the next one. One case study is a client who I've actually been dealing with now for the last 15 years. He took over a dormant business operated by his father, which had closed down due to inability to compete in a changing environment. Using his house as a collateral and funds from family and friends, he put resources together to register the business and started trading again in 1999. Self-efficacy in himself allowed him to take the risky calculated decisions doing business into challenging markets of Nigeria, Ghana, at a time where financial institutions and suppliers considered this market high risk. Initially, credit worthiness of his customer base was challenging with broken promises and non-payment, which management of suppliers was key in keeping the supply chain flow open. Jack's intrinsic motivation came from knowing the risk and reward in difficult markets, which presented opportunities to be exploited. It meant less competitors, as most companies fear entering the African market, preferring to work in Europe or in UK, leading to success of his business. I met him in 2004 when he was struggling to enter the African market. He saw the potential of the market and put all his best on the continent, albeit his challenges. He was seen by competitors as insignificant because he was only doing one or two containers a month. I started advising him on market trends and regulations into African markets and gave him preferential trade terms, which helped him with his cash flow. His break came in 2008 when his volumes exploded exponentially. For instance, he would used to ship about 150 containers on average and a freight shop of about 250,000. And I would give him 45 days free credit. And to release his shipments, he would have to pay I think, a deposit for the empties, but I gave him 30 days free and non I think a non-container deposit that will save him about $300,000 each thing for each shipment. And this gave him an edge over his competitors because then he was able to actually build relationships with his clients, his clients being mainly informal businesses. His game changer was given was when he went into warehousing and distribution, he would break the parcels into small parcels to cater for smaller traders who were not able to buy in bulk. Fast forward to today, Gafuma has grown from a small SME of one person to a large company in a space of 19 years operating in over 13 countries with the annual turnover of 350, 350 million. In 2004, he won, if we got the next start thing, oh, sorry, before we go, if you look at that thing on the left of the slide is actually the uh, activities that is involved in. If we go into the next slide, in 2004, he won, I think, um, the Queen's Award for international trade and subsequently has actually been winning it for the last thing, five years now. So that's actually him there. Uh, accepting his thing, his prize from the thing from the Queen. And if we go to the last slide, that's actually just me there with him, I celebrate with his staff celebrating 20 years in business. So anyone can go into international trade. It doesn't matter how big or small you are, anyone can make it. Thank you for listening. If anyone's got any questions.